Welcome. This is 49A4, uh, and this is entitled Simple Harmonic Motion, Uniform Circular Motion, and Angular Frequency. Now, what we're imagining is a system whereby there's an oscillation backwards and forwards. So I'm looking where this blue line is down here and I'm seeing an oscillation backwards and forwards. And it turns out there's a very specific shape to this relationship. It's either a sine curve or a cosine curve, depending upon how you start the graph. You can mimic this behavior by having a circular moving object and looking at the X component of that motion. So it turns out the X component of the position matches the, the, the uh, X position of the oscillation. And the X component of this tangential velocity matches the velocity of this uh, uh, simple harmonic motion and the X component of the centripetal acceleration mimics the accel is equal to the acceleration of the simple harmonic motion so we can use the mathematics of uniform circular motion to m uh, inform us about the mechanics of the oscillation the position in time the velocity in time and the acceleration in time. What we've got to do is we've got to relate the rate of oscillation to time. Well, we usually measure in circular motion terms. Let's look at the diagram at the side now. Imagine that I have this term table, this, this roundabout that's in blue. And imagine that I'm looking at more detail. So here's the object on the roundabout and what I'm saying is that this X component here which is the X component of this displacement line here so this this X component here is the position of the oscillation and my horizontal component of my tangential velocity is the same as the velocity vector for the simple harmonic motion and the horizontal component of my centripetal acceleration is equal to the acceleration of the simple harmonic motion at that time at that position etc the issue is we've got to enable, enable to be able to do this we have to be able to uh, characterize the angle in terms of time we need to go from having theta to having some function of time and what we find is that we deal in terms of omega t so we need to review a little bit about what omega is um, simple harmonic motion is directly related to uniform circular motion you take the X component of the uniform circular motion and it gives you the parameters for the simple harmonic motion. The angle changes with time, so it is best to express it as omega t instead of theta. Yeah, it's, it might be 27 degrees now, but what will it be in two seconds? Well, that's like saying you might be at six meters now, but where you, will you be in two seconds? And you'd say, well, oh, hold on. If I want to know what my displacement is in a given time, then what I'll do is take my velocity and I'll multiply it by time. Yeah, the distance traveled or the displacement is equal to two meters per second times five seconds equals 10 meters. Analogies are always good, by the way. So in this case, I can say my angle is equal to my angular velocity times my time. Those symbols are 
unfamiliar to most of us. Uh, theta here is measured in radians and omega here is measured in radians per second. Now in truth I could have used degrees and degrees per second but it turns out that the degree is completely made up. There's no universal law that says that there should be 360 degrees in a circle. It's history. It's, it's, it's history. Basically uh, um, 3,000 years ago, maybe more, in basically the Fertile Crescent, which is basically Syria and the like, uh, Middle East, uh, there was a, a culture which had uh, advanced math. So they had, I think it was base six, or I think it was a base six counting system. They were better at measuring angles and better at counting than anybody else in the, in, at that time. They wrote things down. Um, eventually that knowledge got spread out. And so we tend to have things. It's amazing when you think about it, 12 months to the year. There's actually, what, 13 lunar months when you think about it. But 12 months to the year. We have 24 hours to the day. We have 60 minutes in an hour, 60 seconds in a minute, 360 degrees in a circle. This is historical basis. This is, this is not a metric system, that's for sure. It's also useful, which is why we keep it. Um, but if a space alien came down and you showed them that the uh, uh, angle is defined by the arc length s divided by the radius. So you said theta is equal to s over r. Oh, they'd be nodding their head and slapping you on the back and saying what a good job you've done because everybody knows this. This, is, this comes out of the geometry. And the geometry is pretty much the same all over. So we prefer to use uh, uh, radians. Ah, there's not a whole number of them in a circle, which is a little bit off-putting. And yeah, a circle has six and a bit of them, so they really are quite large units. The radian is about 60 degrees. So it's a really quite a large unit, so that's a bit inconvenient. But there are times when we just want to get down to basics, and so using radians is much preferred to using degrees, and, and this is one of them. You've got to make sure your calculator is in radians rather than degrees. You've got to watch out for that. Uh, but this is one of them. And so there's a lot going on here, but it's not complicated math, it's just unfamiliarity. So let's spend a little bit of time and just look at this thing about this radian, this omega, this uh, uh, radians per second, which is an angular velocity, but we, because we're dealing with how things fastly quick, how quickly things oscillate, which is how speedily things go around the circle, rather than calling it an angular velocity, omega. In this context, we call it an angular frequency. We've been a bit loose with the, with the terminology there, but it, it fits. So here's a, here's a question. An object displays uniform circular motion. It has an angular velocity, so omega is equal to six radians per second. How long does it take to travel through th ooh, to travel through a theta, an angle of 30 radians? So this is not 30 radians. 30 radians is about five times around this, but let's say that's the angle. And I know my omega is that, and I want to know the time. And most people, when they look at that, they, hurt, they, they pause, they hesitate, because it's very unfamiliar. And my advice when you're like that is to say, what's the analogy? And the analogy is, well, omega is like velocity, and time is like time, and theta is like displacement. And if I look on this side, I'd say, oh, well, V equals X over T, so t is equal to x over v. And by the same token, you can say omega is equal to theta over t. 
so t is equal to theta over omega so if I come down here I'll go t delta t I prefer because it's a time interval is equal to theta over omega which equals theta which is 30 over omega which is 6 which is 5 seconds so what's my message my message is look this is not hard math but these terms are very unfamiliar and therefore they're uncomfortable so do two things one is get comfortable with them spend time with them do simple problems with them just practice go to the gym practice and then the second thing is use analogies so in my mind I have linked omega is like V linearly and time is like time and then the angle is like uh, displacement linearly the, the linear displacement is like the uh, angle ang the angular angle and that can help you interpret so this is a trivial point on one way but if it's uncomfortable to you it's not trivial so spend some time and practice it and there we are